Now the thing to remember about foundation is three things, the colour, your skin type and the texture and the coverage. Now I'm going to do the colour first. When you're considering the colour, firstly try it out in daylight. The worst thing you can do is look for colours in artificial light because you'll find that when you go out in daylight your skin looks completely unnatural. A good tip is when you're buying foundation to take a little empty pot, either something that you've used up or you can buy empty pots from Muji. And if you take a couple into the makeup counter and ask them just to put a little bit of tester in each one, that way you can go home and maybe on a Saturday morning just try it in full daylight and see which one suits your skin colour properly before you go ahead and buy it. Now, you have to consider more than just your face when you're looking at the colour, especially if you're wearing something that shows off your neck and chest. It's particularly important in the summer when you have lots of skin exposed. Now look at the colour of your skin, look at your neck, look at your chest and any other skin that's exposed. Most people will have a quite a few different shades in there. No one's really perfectly all one colour. Some people are, but they're very lucky. Most people have a different colour chest possibly to the neck, maybe a different colour neck from face. Um, often different colours within the face as well. So you might be have pigmentation in certain areas that make certain areas darker than others. So have a good look overall. I find that with my skin, the neck and chest are quite a similar colour, as are my hands really. A little bit red at the moment. Um, and my face tends to be a little bit darker, mainly because I have pigmentation around my chin area, which tends to darken it down a bit. So I usually try and find something that's closer to the shade of my neck and chest and my cheeks and just sort of lighten up the darker patches just to get that really uniform colour. And that is the main point really with foundation, with the colour, that you're trying to get a uniform colour all over. You're not trying to use foundation to cover absolutely every flaw or every blemish. Foundation is really just to give you uniformity of colour and also to get rid of and cover minor flaws. If you think you've got to cover everything with foundation, you're going to end up looking like you're wearing a mask. So I'm going to use uh, Chanel Pro Lumiere. This is number 20. And this is on to the second thing, which is skin type. I'm using this one because I have quite combination to oily skin. This is a really good foundation for combination skin. And you really do, in the same way with primers, you need to think about what sort of skin you've got. So if you've got very dry skin, you want to look for a foundation product that gives you lots and lots of moisture and gives your skin a dewiness because often very dry skin can look very flat. Likewise, if you've got very oily skin, you can buy some great foundations that have oil absorbing properties. And if you have very dull skin, you can buy something light reflective. So there's lots and lots of different types of foundation that are really suitable for different skin types. So consider that before you buy. I'm gonna apply this foundation to the back of my hand. So it's a really good way just to get it onto the back of your hand before you start applying it. Now you can use fingers, you can use a brush, you can use a sponge. They're all absolutely fine, it's, it's personal choice. Some people just prefer one method over another. I'm gonna use a brush today. This is a, a number seven foundation brush. Quite like using brushes, a mixture of brushes and also fingers. Sponges are good, but I find that with liquid foundations, they, they absorb most of the product. So it just means you go through your foundations extra quick. So I'm just gonna blend in foundation onto the brush. I'm going to start off applying it around the centre of my face. So I'm working on this area that I was trying to smooth and even out. Now lots of quite small blending strokes, so sort of smoothing around the centre and just bringing it out. Once I've done the centre of the face, I tend to move on and start blending it a little bit more outwards. And you really want it as thin as possible around the edges of the face. So unless you're gonna 
apply it onto your neck, which is better not to really because it tends to come off on clothes and things, unless you really need to. Um, you want it to sort of almost disappear towards the edge of your face, You're very, very thin around those edges. Once you've got a thin layer around the areas that you mainly need it, you can then go back in and you can start to add a little bit more. This is particularly good if you've got problem skin. Now in terms of the texture that you choose, it really depends on the coverage. They're very liquidy and more tinted moisturiser type of products. They're really good for people who have great skin already, so you don't really suffer from blemishes and your skin's in pretty good condition then something like a tinted moisturiser is, is perfect for you. The more medium covered liquidy ones like the one I'm using today are great for everyone as well. They're really good because they're buildable. So even if you've got quite bad skin, you can put a thin layer on all over and then you can go back in, which is what I was doing around my chin, and just add a little bit more. You can get more coverage from things like compact foundations, so ones that are sort of more dense, just that the, the pigment is, is denser so you get a little bit more coverage, especially the ones where you can wet the sponge that comes with them and they obviously go on a lot thicker. I don't really advise a heavy, heavy coverage for anyone, even if you've got acne or bad skin problems, because you can use concealer. So it's much better off to put on a medium coverage light to medium coverage all over and then just go in and add a bit more just in the areas where you need it or use your concealer just in those areas. So that's more or less completely covered. I'm just going to check that all around the edges there. Now I'm not going to put any right underneath my eyes and I tend to think that the less you put on around your eyes the better and I'm also I'm going to use some light reflective concealer anyway here so I'm just checking that that is nice and thin around there I don't want too much foundation around there and personally I never put foundation on the lids either I know some people do but I think that it tends to change the colour of your eyeshadow and it doesn't really make it stay on any longer it's another thing that can crease and also, if you do have oily eyelids, I much prefer to use a proper eyelid primer, something that's going to help the eyeshadow to really bond and really stick on, or a very light dusting of powder works pretty well as well. So I tend to leave that area at this stage clean and just think about getting a nice uniform colour, covering minor flaws and really preparing the skin really beautifying the skin. You don't want it to look like foundation, you want it to look natural, you want it to look like just a more beautiful version of yourself. And that is now ready to go on to concealer and the rest of your makeup.